Welcome back to the Atari ST Nostalgia GFA Basic Tour. Now, in the previous video, we familiarized ourselves with the GFA Basic Editor interface. And in this video, we will actually start to use our very first code by setting and processing some variables. And we can then send the output to the screen. Now, using variables is, is actually quite easy in the GFA Basic interface. Uh, let me just go to the uh, correct screen here. Um, because, uh, we, uh, like in Modular 2, uh, it's, it's where I later learned programming, you really have to declare the variable, say what, it, what kind of variable it is. And in, in GFA Basic, it's actually, actually quite easy. Uh, you just you have to give your variable a name. Um, I, I will just say number, uh, number percent is 12. Uh, and now I, what I did is I created a variable called number. Uh, I ended the, num the name of the variable with a percent sign, which means it's an integer value, so it's a numerical value. And I can do the same uh, for text. I will use a dollar sign and it says, okay, uh, hello world, for instance. And it will just accept these. Uh, so it now says, okay, you did, uh, you did this. And the interesting uh, thing about this is, um, there's no declaration, it will automatically say, okay, this is the variable, it will set the value. Um, if you just set a variable, um, it will actually, the, the default value uh, will be zero. Uh, so uh, you don't, it, it will never be empty, it will never give an error on it. So it, actually it's quite, it's quite forgiving. Uh, we can, let me just uh, clear this one. Uh, let's, let's write some sample code to actually see how we use this. Um, there's also different kinds of value variables you can use that I will not go into uh, in this uh, videos like booleans and stuff. I will only be working with numerical and uh, uh, string values. So let's let's write some code. Uh, let's say I have a number one and I will set it to let's say 10. Number two, I will set to 25. And number three, is actually something I will calculate. Um, so what I'm basically going to write is I, I will have two numbers and the third number will be a multiplication of the two. And I will use some, some text to actually uh, print that uh, on the screen. That's basically what I do. So I, I set the two numerical value variables. Now the third number uh, is number 1% multiplied by number 2%. And it also, of course, will also uh, add, uh, accept that as a co as a uh, variable, just one that it calculates. Uh, I will say my first text will be first number is, and of course, this this is a very useless program, and it's a very normally you would do this probably different, but this is just for for uh, education purposes. First number is, and uh, see now it says syntax error because actually uh, you had to use a string. I was going to say I am going to make a numerical value, but I actually uh, I actually put text in it. Uh, so text three uh, is uh, multiplying these numbers. gives okay all right so um, and now I will uh, output these variables to screen which means I will use the print command and what I will do is just I will print text one screen and follow it by number one and then I will put a pause uh, this is the, the standard pause command of, of GFR basic, which basically you follow it by a number and um, it, it counts in 50ths of a second. So uh, a 100 means a pause of two seconds, uh, which is also very handy if you want to co your code to stop for a while. Uh, let's do text to string number two. I should not, I should not call my variables number two. People will laugh at me. Uh, do another pause and then print text three string followed by number 
three. And I made a typo, which I shouldn't do. Uh, and then pause, pause was 100. And I think this should be enough. This is a really simple program, as you see. Basically, what it does is I set two values. I set them in the code, which is the most easy way of inputting something. Um, I multiply them. So I, I declare variables, input data into them process this data, uh, input some more values, uh, in this case text values and some variables, and then use the print command to output the status of the variables to the screen, which is basically the basic functionality of, of any uh, software program. I test my code, it doesn't give an error. So let's see what it does. It says the first number is 10, second number is 25. Multiplying these numbers gives 250, and then it will end the program. Now, as you can see, there's quite some room between uh, between the sentence and the number. That's because uh, in this print command I actually used, uh, and I will actually shorten this sentence a bit, I used a comma to separate the text from the value, uh, uh, which basically means it will add it will add a tab uh, between them. What I can also do is use a semicolon, I will show that again also, uh, put a semicolon here, and if I run the program now, it will actually put it uh, right behind the print command, so it will not give, uh, it will not put any space between them. Uh, as you can see, this is a really simple program. Um, if I want to change the values, uh, surely I can. I can, I can make like really, really big numbers. Uh, I run the program again. So now I have numbers, and I actually did a calculation for which I can say, okay, yeah, I really couldn't have done this myself. I would have used a calculator or write some code to do it for me. Uh, I chose to do. The second one and this is basically the most basic way of, of uh, processing variables so we familiarize ourselves with some integer val numerical uh, variables we created some text string variables and put some data in them and then we uh, did some operation on the numerical values and put them out to screen that's the basic things we learned today uh, the next time uh, we will look uh, at actually adding to this code um, because um, I want actually to use the outcome of the processing to, to execute more code um, based on the outcome, which is called conditional code execution. That is something we will look at in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.